Okay, we are just going to be working some more examples of differentiation of exponential and logarithmic functions. And so I have the first one here. We want to find the second derivative of h of x, where it is defined as the natural log of 2x plus x squared. And so pause the video and see if you can find this answer on your own. All right, well, we just need to recall what the derivative of natural log of x is. And we know that the derivative of that is 1 over my inside part, where that's 1 over 2x. And then it's times the derivative of the inside part. So here's my chain rule, which is just 2. And then plus the derivative of x squared gives me 2x. And so this one's going to be super easy to do because my 2's are going to cancel out, and that just gives me 1 over x plus 2x. If you want to put this in power notation, that's x to the negative 1 plus 2x. So that's my first derivative. And now I don't even need to utilize exponential or log derivative rules because now I can just take the second derivative of it as normal. So negative x to the negative 2 plus 2, or if I rewrite this back, negative 1 over x squared plus 2. And so we have just found the second derivative of this example. All right, one more type of example, and this one is using logarithmic differentiation. So when you see instructions that say, find the derivative by using logarithmic differentiation, you might think, oh, we'll utilize the rules that we've just learned. Well, actually, what it's trying to get you to do is utilize the properties of logs before you try and take the derivative of it. If I were to take the derivative of this right now, I'd have lots of moving parts to it. I'd have a couple chain rules. I have a quotient rule, and the possibilities are endless. So what we want to do is we want to convert this using some log properties. So what we're going to do is we are going to take the natural log of both sides. Or you could take the regular log of this too if that's what you prefer. But the derivative of natural log is a little bit easier. So that's why we're choosing to do that one instead. So I'm going to take the natural log of g of x over here on the left, and that's going to be the same thing as the natural log of this here on the right. And so the question is, is why would we do such a thing? It looks like it's making it much more complicated. Well, what do we know about the properties of logs? Well, we know that if we have a division of logs, then we can actually write this out as a separation of two logs with a subtraction. So this is the same thing as natural log of the cube root of x plus 1 minus the natural log of 1 minus 3x to the fourth. So basically, we just eliminated the need for a quotient rule. Well, how else can we utilize properties of logs here? Well, we know that if a log has a power in it, then that can actually be pulled down in front. So what's this power here? If I take the cube root of something, that is the one-third power. So this is one-third times the natural log of x plus 1 minus 4 times the natural log of 1 minus 3x. And so we have the right-hand side of our equation much more simplified. I don't have to do any more quotient rules. Um, I only have to do little simple chain rules here. And so the derivative of this is going to be much easier to do at this point. Now, we have a little bit confusion of what's happening over here on the left, but I'll explain that in a moment. So on the left, that's still defined as this, which is the natural log of g of x. So what we want to do is now I can actually take the derivative of this. So this is where I'm using calculus information, where up until this point I was using algebra information. So we're going to start with the left here, and we're going to take the derivative of this. 
So we want to take the derivative of natural log of g of x. Well, we know the derivative of natural log is 1 over my inside function. And then I have the chain rule times the inside of my function. So the inside of my function is g prime of x. So the derivative of natural log is 1 over that times the inside, which is just g prime of x. So this is actually g prime of x divided by g of x. And we'll work through that over here. And we're going to leave that there momentarily, but we'll come back to it. And now I want to take the derivative on the right-hand side of this. So I can pull my constant out, so that's 1 third times the derivative of this, well, that's 1 over that. And the chain rule says times the derivative of the inside. Well, the derivative of x plus 1 is just 1. Minus my constant, I can hold off to the side. The derivative of natural log is 1 over that times the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of 1 minus 3x is just a negative 3. So let me simplify that. So I have 1 over 3 times x plus 1 in my first piece, plus 12, because these two negatives cancel out, over 1 minus 3x in my second piece. And so we've done all of the derivative information. But now we actually have to think for what we were trying to solve for. If we were trying to come up with the derivative of this, then that means we were trying to come up with g prime of x. Well, the issue that we have is over here on the left, we don't have just g prime of x. We have g prime of x divided by g of x. So I can treat this just like an algebra equation. If I'm trying to solve for this, how can I isolate it? Well, I know to get rid of my denominator, I just multiply by it on both sides of the equation. So my g of x over my g of x cancels out. So this means that g prime of x is equal to that green stuff, 1 over 3 times x plus 1 plus 12 over 1 minus 3x times my g of x. Well, what is g of x? That was given to us. That was the problem. g of x is defined as this. So times whatever that is, the cube root of x plus 1 over 1 minus 3x to the fourth power. So all I did was make the substitution that g of x is equal to this. So I substituted g of x is equal to this. Now, I was trying to solve for g prime of x. I have g prime of x isolated, and I have everything over here on the right. So we have done exactly what we wanted to do. We've taken the derivative of it, but completely different than probably what you initially thought. Um, when I first initially see something like this, I see quotient rule, I see power rules where I have to convert the square root. I have a couple of different chain rules and a lot of simplification. Here, the only unique thing that we had to do was to solve for g of x on the left-hand side of the equation. Once we get our mind wrapped around that, then we see the right-hand side or the derivative part of this is going to be a much simpler process. So we have found out how to take the derivatives of all different types of exponential and logarithmic equations. And now our job is to figure out why would we want to do so? What's the point of this? And how can we apply these?